Hello everybody and welcome back to another King's War Tournament Report. I'm Visibly Riley and today, well, starting today, I thought we'd go through the Clash of Storms 2018 event I went to last weekend, uh, which was August 25th and 26th. Uh, this was a 2250 event with six rounds over two days. I of course brought the Ratkin list I've been running recently and we'll see how I did. Game 1 saw me versus Abyssal Dwarves, which is always a fun matchup when you're playing Ratkin, a little slaves versus slavers. Uh, and here is my opponent's list. Well, a very rough approximation. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so starting off with what I remember, there is a troop of Abyssal Berserkers, followed by two hordes of Lesser Obsidian Golems, a, or two regiments of Slave Orc Gore Riders, a regiment of Halfbreeds, a horde of Abyssal Grotesques, two dragon fire teams, two slave drivers, one I knew I know has the banner of the griffin, uh, an iron caster with lightning bolt and surge, and then a supreme iron caster on great winged half-breed with lightning bolt, surge, and veil of shadows. Uh, this was only 1860 of his 2250 list, so I have almost 400 points missing here. There are no units, so that's all in upgrades that I just don't really recall. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. Uh, I'm not going to show off the Ratkin list that I played, as it's the same one I played all the time, but as a quick run through, uh, it was eight regiments of slaves, one regiment of Vermintide, two hordes of <coughs> shock troops, a horde of blight, three troops of scurriers, two of whom have short or light crossbows, an assassin with the blade of slashing, a demon spawn with wings, a warlock with bane chant and an inspiring talisman. And I think that's... <laughs> you've seen it, if you've seen any of the last ugh, three battle reports-ish. So, anyway, moving forward. Here we see the end of deployment. So, for let's go over the Ratkin deployment first. Uh, we have, from left to right, the three regiments of <clears throat> scurriers. The thrown weapons are in the front, along with the assassin. Then we have two regiments of slaves. Behind them, the first horde of shock troops. Then we have the Demon Spawn, to the right of him is the uh, Vermintide Regiment, to the right of them are the remaining six regiments of Slaves, followed by the Horde of Blight behind them, and to the right of that the <coughs> Warlock, to the right of that we have the Shock Troops, oh I have a Weapon Team, I'm sorry I missed that in my run through, rundown, but uh, yeah to the right of that is that Weapon Team. Uh, this deployment I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with it. The scenario we were playing was, hold on one second, I'm a little disorganized. The scenario was invade. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm trying to get onto that center point. Uh, we have marked out our three most, uh, our three most expensive units to be bounties, and uh, I'll go over what mine are. It was the demon spawn, and then the two hordes of shock troops because they're more expensive than my other hordes. And I pretty much just have identical units here. So yeah, the Demon Spawn, the two Shock Troops were my bounties. And his bounties were the Grotesques, the Supreme Iron Caster, and one of the hordes of Obsidian Golems, because one of them had a magic item that was uh, more expensive than the other one. But moving on to my opponent's deployment, we have from left to right a regiment of Gore Riders in front of the, uh, those are the Grotesques. To the right of that, we've got the Supreme Caster. Oh, he had a, uh, I missed that. He had a, a Greater Obsidian Golem. Yeah, so that's definitely a lot of those points. Uh, a Greater Obsidian Golem is right there. Then to the right of that, we have the first horde of Obsidian Golems, the Lessers. That is the one that is not his bounty. To the right of that, we have his <coughs> fire team, his little weapon, uh, weapon team. To the right of that, the Obsidian Golems that are the actual objective. To the right of that we have the second fire or weapon team. Behind them is the Berserker troop and I somewhere around there are the Iron Caster and the two uh, ASBs. I know that the one that, is, that you can sort of see behind his um, bounty lesser obsidian golems, that is his banner the griffin. So it's over there. Uh, to the right of this whole thing we have his <clears throat> Uh, slave gore riders in the front and the half breeds behind them, the two regiments. Uh, I I like my opponent's deployment here. Um, he's definitely making use of the fact that we have a uh, well, neither of us has a, a large amount of shooting and he's really making use of the fact that we have a giant 
giant hill. Like, that is obscene uh, in the middle of the table here to really dictate this movement. Uh, it's not going to hinder any charges, but it is going to stop line of sight. And since he is the elite army, uh, me getting a, a bunch of charges on him is probably what he doesn't want here. Uh, anyway, moving forward. We see my vanguard. I just roll everything up towards the gore riders. I don't really care uh, if he charges me. He can't get on the assassin because he can't fit there. And, you know, if he charges, he's going to get charged by a demon spawn or slaves or something. So I like being very aggressive with scurriers. Uh, my scur this is showing off all the scurriers uh, except for the assassin because he's out of range. Uh, shoot at that gore rider regiment in front of me. Um, yeah, because the vanguard is 12, and then I move 6, right? Uh, yeah, it's just showing off that shot. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not what they did. Uh, <laughs> it's showing off the end of the vanguard. It's like, that looks really far. That's over 12. But anyway, so we have turn 1. I do move the scurriers forward, right, to shoot at those gore riders, the aforementioned ones. Uh, and the assassin is behind them. I think he could charge. No, because he can't land the uh, supreme caster on me. So, again, he can't charge the assassin. Otherwise, on the left, we sort of just skirt around that uh, little, that, that large wall that's on the left there. Uh, I don't have any Pathfinder in this army. The best I have is one flyer. So I really just don't want anything to do with it. And I don't, I think I need to drop the uh, Grotesques and maybe the Ironcaster with that horde of shock troops pretty quickly. As <clears throat> he doesn't have much that can, I mean, he can always search uh, some Obsidian Golems into me. But he doesn't have a whole lot that can come support that left flank, at least as I see it, uh, because I'm going to try to focus my shooting on his gore riders first. Uh, otherwise, I just move <clears throat> everything on the on my right flank all the way forward. We just push onto the hill. It doesn't matter to me if he charges. It's what we're about. So, uh, yeah, my warlock, I like to make it so I don't have inspiring on everything because I like to see my slaves break. I don't I don't want them wavered. I don't want to reroll on the waiver. I want them dead or fine. So it just lowers the chances that they'll get wavered. So yep, that's that. With my shooting, I shoot everything into these gore riders and yeah, we just flat out remove them. Uh, it was 36 shots on a four plus on four plus four plus with reroll ones. So that's like you know eh, 11 ish, 10 ish wounds. Uh, which is a pretty decent chance of breaking them. Uh, so I don't feel too bad about that. It's not o over. And I did, I believe, throw my lightning bolt from the demon spawn into them as well, just to assure it. But I couldn't see with the other lightning bolt. Uh, yeah, and this is just showing off the end of the round. Here we see my opponent's turn one. Uh, this one, my opponent went into the think tank for a good 10 minutes before moving any model. So I think he might have been a little uh, taken a little aback by how, how fast my army was moving, maybe, or how many models there are. I got a lot of comments about that is a lot of rats. But uh, yeah, as you might have seen in the battle reports so far, they don't really survive, so it looks like a lot of rats until around turn three. But anyway, with this game, he decides to play very uh, back, which I like, because I think I have him outgunned here, and I have him definitely outbodied, so... Uh, and this is a game about killing and taking the center. So I'm pushing all the way into the center, trying to keep him out. And the fact that he didn't advance at all just gives me a free turn of taking the center again, uh, which I'm all about. I think that's great. Uh, I know he fired his weapon teams into some slaves, uh, and I think he removed at least one of them. It looks like I did two wounds uh, with my Warlock's Lightning Bolt onto the other Gore Riders. I'm trying to just pop out his speed as quickly as possible. That's sort of my idea. Uh, the obsidian golems, or the lesser ones, uh, at least, I need to kill one of them, but I don't really need to kill both of them, and they're pretty tough, so I don't want to sink a lot of fire. I want to remove all of his support instead. So, yeah, he shoots into my slave, so we walk a picture back. He kills the third from the uh, third from the left uh, of the slaves on the hill, and then he does two wounds to the ones uh, on the far left. So I like this. It makes it so my shock troops now my shock troops and blight have a better line of sight towards the right end of the field, and or the blight have a better line of sight towards the right, and then my shock troops can actually see the center, which is what I need to. I need to get into that centermost obsidian golem horde. So uh, 
Yep, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. <clears throat> Turn two. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I just push into him. I decide to charge with slaves. I failed one of my yellow bellies, so they just I instead just ran forward with some. Uh, and <clears throat> but one of them made it into the lesser obsidians I'm trying to kill. Otherwise, uh, everything just pushed forward. I want to make it so he's locked out of getting the center. I don't care if he kills me as long as I end with more unit strength on that center objective. That's my plan. Uh, I run my Vermintide in front of his greater, greater Obsidian Golem because I don't care if he charges me. I'm just trying to make it so uh, he has to surge or he has to change course. Uh, so that's the plan there. My Demon Spawn moves more centrally so he can pick and choose uh, combats. I don't move forward with my Scurriers at all because why would I? Uh, I, I can just fire off bows. Obviously, I don't have my thrown weapons just yet, but I don't want to. I don't want to throw them away uh, right now. I, I will in the future, but or I can in the future. I, I should say. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. <clears throat> and after shooting, it looks like uh, I just slung some more wounds around. Uh, did I do anything? Yeah, it looks like I just sort of slung some wounds around. I know I tried to get some onto his grotesques. Uh, I at least didn't wave at him, but uh, I'm not even sure I did a wound to those grotesques. Uh, the slaves do zero wounds to those lesser obsidian golems, but that's not that unlikely. And here we see my opponent. Oh no, I am completely wrong. I am sorry. Uh, it looks like this is after shooting. So yeah, I fired off my, uh, some pot shots. I know my uh, demon spawn fired a lightning bolt into one of his wizards, or uh, the iron caster. I did one wound and I wavered him, so feeling good about that. I do a couple of wounds to his uh, one of his ASBs, or maybe it was a second iron caster. Anyway, that middle hero. Uh, I do a couple of wounds there using uh, a lightning bolt as lightning bolt or bow. Something gets hit by bows. Something gets hit by lightning bolt. Sorry about this. It was a couple of days ago, so uh, and it looks like I fired. Yeah, I definitely fired off my lightning bolt onto the gore riders again. Uh, from the Warlock, and I get a waiver there, too. So this is a pretty good turn for me. I waver two of his units, and I am currently gumming him up. I'm feeling very good at this point. Turn two from my opponent. Yeah, he sends the... Oh, looks like the Slaves did two wounds to the Lesser Obsidian Golems, which I'm perfectly fine with, as I've turned off some of his healing. So he'll have to choose between, you know, firing off Lightning Bolts and, or healing uh, this turn. So, yeah, I send... He sent, or I'm sorry, he sends his lesser obsidian golems into a counter charge on the slaves. Uh, he charges my vermintide with the greater obsidian golem, and otherwise the obsidian golems, yeah, the ones on the hill. It looks like I I forgot to take a picture at the end of his movement, but they charge the slaves that were right uh, to the left of the blight uh, and just roll right through them. But unfortunately, uh, my opponent sees this where he either opens his flank to my demon spawn or he opens the flank to the blight uh it, i mean he could face both of them head on but that's not much better i probably would have done that but maybe it wasn't possible it must have not been because i know he took a lot of time with that positioning so i'm guessing he measured it and it just wasn't something he could do but uh yeah at the end of combat he ends up uh i think he wavers the slaves with the lesser obsidian golems in front uh, or maybe he drops them, but uh, the Lesser Obsidian Golems on the left there definitely kill off those slaves. And the Greater Obsidian Golem does four wounds to my Vermintide. They're not inspired, they've got nothing, and he doesn't even waver them. So, very unfortunate. Uh, yeah, he did, he did in fact kill them. Uh, so, I'm this is okay for me, I think. Uh, I took a wound on my Blight, it looks like. I think he just threw a... Yeah, he uh, fired off his weapon team, did some pot shots there. Uh, it looks like I killed the other one the last turn. Oh, yes, I charged them with slaves. I'm sorry. Yeah, I charged into him with slaves with the yellow belly. And then if we walk some uh, some back here, right here. Uh, yeah, so I charged into his weapon team with my slaves on my turn too. And my uh, leader point is already in his flank when this happens and his weapon teams are individuals so when i overrun i overrun into the lesser obsidian golems get a flank charge there so very good there uh, i think i ended up doing a couple of wounds and he healed them on his turn uh so anyway sorry about the backtrack but we're gonna get a bit of that in these battle reports uh yeah this is the end of his turn 
Uh, I'm very happy with it. Again, uh, it looks like we're finally going to get into combat, so let's see how that goes. Turn three. Turn three. Uh, first off, I send the Vermintide back into the Greater Obsidian Golem. I'm very happy to just fight him. Uh, then I move up with most of my army, as the rats do. Uh, I decide to... It looks like I... Yeah, it looks like my slaves in the woods, I think that they failed their yellow belly because they were now in the front of the lesser obsidian golems as they backed up after killing the other slaves. And uh, yeah, so they failed the yellow belly, they just back up to bo bo uh, box in the gore riders, which I'm okay with. Uh, I'm still going to shoot at them with my weapon team. So I start watching, uh, walking some slaves from the right over to the objective because they're great objective gra grabbers. Uh, and then lastly, I send my Demon Spawn and Blight definitely into this Lesser Obsidian Golem Horde. Uh, I do make a slight mistake here, as it's he, my opponent clearly marked them. I just forgot <laughs> during this charge. I had a bit of a brain fart. Uh, and I thought that this was the unit with, uh, with the counter that I was trying to get for the bounty. So uh, I threw everything into him. I probably still would have done it uh, had I not realized that, but small mistake on my part anyway. Uh, yeah, and I also sent my shock troops, uh, the rightmost, into the obsidian golems that already have two wounds on them. Um, I don't expect to kill them, but I can do some real damage. And if I spike, it'll spike hard, right? That's because that's 25 attacks with elite. It looks like I'm going to throw the bane chant to get the uh, wounding on fours. I think obsidian golems are sixes. Yeah, so wound on fours with the vicious. Uh, I can definitely spike those wounds, and they're at a dash 19. So we'll see. Uh, end of combat, my Vermintide do, I believe, nothing to the Greater Obsidian Golem, or maybe they did one wound. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, my Blight and the Demon Spawn walk right through those Lesser Obsidian Golems, and I'll get back to something I did here in a second. Uh, and then my Shock Troops, uh, it looks like I did 10 wounds to the, the other Lesser Obsidian Golem, so I'm looking for a 7 twice, and I fail it. So, that's a little unfortunate there. But I... I also failed with my weapon team to get a waiver onto the Gore Riders, so the slaves that are sitting right in front of them are definitely not long for this world. Now, the mistake I made with the fight with the uh, leftmost Lesser Obsidian Golems against the Blight is I decide to turn my Demon Spawn, and I'm like, oh yeah, I just need to face towards the right. His Lord can't see me, the Grotesques can't see me. This is fine. <sighs> Yeah, and then I completely forgot about Surge, and that Greater Obsidian Golem is just going to spin in place and charge right into his rear. Uh, he'll be slightly over an inch away due to how he has to uh, place his unit afterwards, but oof, big mistake on my part. And yeah, here's my opponent's turn three. He turns the Greater Obsidian Golem right around. Uh, it looks like he's within one of my Vermintide right now, but he could definitely have placed him. I think it's just a... Uh, snafu in the movement, but uh, he could have definitely placed him there. Uh, it's just a wing problem. The other lesser obsidian golems definitely charge into my berm, uh, my shock troops uh, that are off the hill. Now, it looks like it's a rear charge. That's just because my shock troops have all their halberds in the front, and with all the fists and halberds, they just don't mix together. So that is not a rear charge. It's a front charge. In fact, it's a counter charge. Uh, the Gore Riders go into the flank of my slaves, uh, thus getting past their own yellow belly, so that's fun. And his Lord and Grotesque just sort of shimmy to my right a little bit. The Grotesque are trying to or hide from more, sh uh, more shooting, I guess, or maybe to contribute more. Uh, he's definitely denying me the points. And his Supreme Caster moves forward to get that uh, surge into the rear of my Demon Spawn. So, whoops. Sorry, not turn four yet. Uh, it looks like I forgot to take a picture for this, but his Greater Obsidian Golem actually doesn't do too well, if I remember correctly, against my Demon Spawn. Uh, he, he does enough wounds to force a, a nerf check, but I think he's looking for uh, a six to waver, maybe an eight to kill. Uh, but my opponent nails both the rolls, and poof, he's gone. Uh, the Lesser Obsidian Golems, I believe, do not kill the Shock Troops, though. So, that's good. I mean, they only have 18 attacks, and I'm... Uh, 21, 22 inspired, or yeah, 20, 21, 23 inspired right now. Uh, the Gore Riders walk right through those slaves. Uh, easy money. And we move forward. So, turn four.
Yep, turn four. Uh, he's definitely killed that demon spawn. I decide to do a full charge with my Blight and uh, Shock Troops onto his bounty uh, Lesser Obsidian Golems this time. And uh, I did forget to take a picture during my movement. I pretty much roll that unit. I think it was already, I think it was still sitting on 12 wounds. So that's, you know, pretty likely. It looks like my Shock Troops took six in their retribution. Uh, one of the problems with this list is that I have no healing and I'm not saying it's a problem for Ratkin but I really feel it when I only have these I have very few combat units um, so that six wounds is actually kind of a big deal uh, otherwise I send the other shock troops and some slaves into the greater obsidian golem just trying to hope uh, hoping to get some work done there uh, I have no support so meh and then I do a little nimble charge into his uh, big supreme caster so I feel good about that uh, works really well and I send some slaves into his grotesques just to bog them up a little bit uh, because I want to do some shooting onto his characters this turn to try to drop them out so moving forward okay that's a great picture uh, moving forward yeah the like I said the lesser obsidian golems lose the fight against the blight and the shock troops but very surprisingly actually is that my shock troops and slaves kill the greater obsidian golem uh that felt great as it's not like it's not the most unlikely thing but i only hit on fours and then i wound on fives and it's a dash 18 uh and then i have you know 24 slave attacks so that's not <laughs> that's not an assured roll uh so feel feel great about that um i do one wound to his caster with my vermintide and that's all i could ask for uh just turning off his casting and his flight so that's great uh, I might have done a wound to the grotesques. It doesn't really matter. Uh, unfortunately, the the problem here this turn is that my shooting did nothing. I go for the weapon team. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It didn't do nothing. Uh, this is the turn I go for the gore raiders. So, yeah, the weapon team here uh, does the couple wounds I need to walk right through them. And I believe I cast Bane Chant onto the shock troops again to make sure I get rid of those lesser obsidian golems. And moving forward. Here is my opponent's turn four. Uh, he countercharges with his grotesques into my slaves. He backs up with his supreme caster. Uh, I think, yeah, he backs up with him instead of charging into the vermintide. Uh, and then otherwise move some characters around to block up the blight and get this combo charge, which is uh, unfortunate. Uh, when I did my, I think I overran with the shock troops and I probably should have just backed up. Oh no, I changed facing with my overran with the blight. But uh, I probably should have backed up with the shock troops just to make sure that I couldn't get combo charged like this because those berserkers have 20 attacks. Uh, <laughs> they'll they'll add some damage. So yeah, with my opponent's rolls here, he actually rolls terribly for the berserkers. It's like four hits or something uh, and like three wounds. But then the half uh, half raids attack, and I think they only fail with like two. So it puts my shock troops on a lot of wounds and just blows right through them doesn't get the double one so yeah this is not looking great right now and uh, my blight are currently staring down the berserkers and an individual but the individual is actually in their way uh, they can't pivot past him that uh, banner the griffin guy but when I wheel uh, to charge him I can you know if I blow right through him I can get that one inch overrun right into the berserker troops as well and then block up the half breeds from being able to get near the objective so that's looking great uh, my shock troops my remaining bounty uh, start backing up and I realize now that I wasted a turn of shooting uh, <laughs> really by charging those grotesques with my slaves I should not have done that I should have just put the slaves in front of them to block them in and thrown as many shots as I could but uh, I realize that now and start shooting into the grotesques with what I have but it's a little uh, it's a little too little too late. Uh, I want to... Oh no, I'm sorry. This is the... Yeah, I go for the throne attacks, but the bows I decide to put into the characters. Oh no, into the half-breeds. Uh, yes, I decide to throw the bows into the half-breeds. This is another mistake. Uh, I got momentarily confused on turn 5 here, uh, thinking that we were playing loot counters and that they had my loot counters for whatever reason. I don't know. It was early and I... Yeah, you know, great job, me. Uh, but I move everything else around. The Blight charge into his uh, his character. I don't know where it is there. 
Uh, but yeah, I sent my blight into his ASB, and unfortunately, oh, and no, 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 uh, that's right. I could get around the ASB and charge into the Berserkers directly. Uh, but yeah, I put I put a ton of damage onto them, and I, oop, I double won it. Uh, unfortunately, I did not take a picture of it, but yeah, that is what happens. Uh, on his turn, he charges into this weapon team right here, and poof, it's gone. Uh, the grotesque decide to not charge into my into my scurriers. I'm not sure what the plan was there, because he probably could have killed them and then backed up out of my shock troops charge range. But maybe that also wasn't possible. Maybe if maybe he only backed up uh, three, he could get out, but otherwise couldn't. Um, I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, it's really unfortunate. The berserkers go into my blight and actually do better against the blight with ensnare than they did against the shock troops but considering how far away they did against the shock troops it's not that unreasonable uh and they put a few wounds on them but not enough to really put them in any danger as they're a dash 21 right now uh the half breeds blow right through that weapon team so uh, <laughs> it's getting a little little dicey right now uh with that center objective and how close they are to it um, it looks like his Supreme Caster is just staring down my army. And turn 6 begins. Uh, turn 6, this is us measuring my Warlock, as I realize I have to I have to get rid of either the Grotesques or his uh, Supreme Caster. The Grotesques, thankfully, are sitting on five, 5 or 6 wounds, it looks like, in the back there. So I have a decent chance at it, uh, as I have Lightning Bolt 5, and then I have 4 Piercing uh, 3 plus. Uh, shots with vicious and then I have 36 uh, shots on four pluses with vicious so I have a pretty good shot at dropping them this turn but unfortunately my bows uh, just you know they don't hit this round so that uh, momentary brain fart on turn five where I thought it was loot tokens to the bounty tokens really cost me this game which is unfortunate uh, I do get to charge into the half breeds with some slaves it's always fun that way uh, the idea is just to keep him out of three. Uh, I mean, it's I charge into him, maybe I get a waiver, uh, and then I have him charge me and hope he doesn't kill them because then he can't overrun. But that's you know that's just the best I can do. So not a great plan. It's just the one we have. And moving forward, yeah, I don't drop the half breed. Don't get it. Uh, and then I do, however. Get a. I'm sorry. I don't drop the grotesques. I do, however, get a waiver on the half breeds, putting one wound with my slaves and box carring it. So I got a double one with my blight onto his berserkers, but then I box card this. So at least there's that. And that's the end of the game. Uh, this ends up being a 10-10 tie, uh, which is pretty nuts in the blackjack scoring system, as a win is worth 14 points, and then you adjust for the total number of points you have. Uh, my opponent has four for killing my demon spawn and one of the units of shock troops uh, and then I have four for killing the lesser obsidian golems and ha and having the center objective so not getting those grotesques uh, really I mean it cost me this game but I got some luck otherwise uh, so I'm not gonna I, I think that this is about what I deserve for how I played in this game um, I think that at best I can hope for is uh, the best I can I could have hoped for was a tie as I just played pretty poorly uh, forgetting what the mission parameters were for a turn getting a little bloodthirsty uh, not turning my demon spawn around forgetting about surge I mean it's just pretty rookie mistakes so I'm happy with a tie um, but yes yeah, so it's a 14-7 uh, and then it for it's a 14 points to win 10 points for a tie or 7 points for a loss so we get 10 points first then we adjust for the scenario. Obviously, we don't because we got a tie. Then we go to the attrition, and we had about 200 points between us uh, in terms of the point differential. So we end up with just a pure tie, uh, and that's the end of game one, walking away with a 10-10. Uh, we will see what the next one is. I hope you'll join me then.